All right, welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we have the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser. The only one available in the US. Other countries, you guys get some different variants, but for us, we get the Land Cruiser 200 series. And sorry for the wind today. Hopefully you can be able to hear me. So for 2020, they have made a few updates and they haven't done a new engine or transmission since 20 or 2008. So for 2020, they did replace the six speed transmission. It now has an eight speed. Uh, so far it's been great. I mean, it's a Land Cruiser. You don't really notice the transmission much to begin with. It's in the US, they tune it really soft. It seems like you don't really feel the torque converter lock up very often. The shifts are really smooth. And that's the same for this new eight speed. And uh, so far I've enjoyed it. Fuel mileage doesn't seem to be much better if at all. I'm averaging about 15 when I'm actually driving. It's been idling for a bit, so it's gonna say lower than that. But overall, this is a great vehicle. It uh, rings in about 90,000, just under $90,000 for the US model for this trim. And it is a seven seater, it might be eight. I'm not sure if the third row fits two or three. I'll, I'll get that later, but um, it does. It is very off-road capable, but these AT tires are pretty mild. And you can see those running boards are really low. Um, it, it's uh Turn the headlights on they must have turned themselves off automatically so it doesn't pass the fog light test you cannot turn your fog lights on unless your headlights are on which is interesting for a vehicle this off-road capable and when the sequoia would let you do that so uh, it does have one trick thing on the suspension there's no special trd suspension or anything on the land cruiser but it does have this so it actually increases your articulation off-road and improves your on-road stability um, it does have some weird issues same as the 2019 so this seven pin trailer plug is so far away from the hitch the hitch is just underneath here um, that with a lot of trailers you're going to need an extension on your power cord or whatever your seven pin plug you'll need a, an extension on that to be able to reach that whole distance is that wheel oh there's a rock there like it was off the ground anyway um so in the u.s you get really nice leather this is really soft touch great leather this is still a hard kind of a harder plastic here um so if you'd like to rest your elbow up there i haven't seen a vehicle that does that really well uh land cruiser is the same as all the others um it is sorry it does have all the features basically it comes with the toyota standard features safety sense sorry toyota safety sense features and um it is the lower of the two though so it's this bottom one toyota safety sense p and you see the land cruisers on it right there and basically it comes with those four safety features, which is pretty cool. The pre-collision system with pedestrian automatic high beams, lane departure alert, and dynamic radar cruise control. So those are all standard features on this one. Um, there are a select few, like the RAV4 that we had a couple weeks ago, for example. That one has the whole suite of features there, uh, which is just a little bit nicer. Let's go over the window sticker while we're here. Um, Basically, the only option, well, there are two carpet floor mats. You can see there with the Land Cruiser logo and the rear seat entertainment system. Right there. And those screens, I don't know. I've never been a fan of tons of electronics in vehicles. Uh, those screens are okay. They're not the newest, greatest technology. Land Cruiser, I mean, everything you do with Land Cruiser is uh durability longevity this is one of toyota's longest lasting vehicles as far as reliability and durability goes um so that those screens i don't know they're just not the newest and best 
And same with this. I, I actually have enjoyed this a little bit more than the Sequoia and the Tundra. Um, it does have, I don't know, normal features in it. I don't care much for all this electronic stuff, but it does. If you're in four low, going slow, it pops up the camera. And the camera button's right here if you need to actually manually do it. It's a little hard to see when you're in the driver's seat. It's either gonna be behind here or behind there. It's hard to see. So you hit the camera button there and it can change between those two views um, however you want it. And it does have the inclinometer and I don't know what the side inclinometer is. So the incline is forward and back and then there's side to side. Um, just so you can kind of get an idea. Uh, and that's in degrees, which we 30 degrees i should look this up is roughly uh maybe a 70 percent grade 45 degrees would be 100 percent grade so we're uh, i have a picture i'll post up on the screen of how steep our hills are that we test on but it's above the 30 degrees it's probably i don't know 33 34 degrees uh so you're you know it's 70 percent grade maybe i'll uh, i'll put that on the screen as well i'll do that conversion for you um the Land Cruiser comes standard, I believe, with all this stuff. Like I said, I don't see any options on here besides those two that we mentioned. So you have heated and cooled seats. If you just hit it once, it'll flip it to auto. Right now it's off. And then uh, you can turn them on however you want. Heated steering wheel. That's for the uh, passenger as well. Uh, auxiliary input and USB. And here is a wireless phone charger. I don't know if you can see. There's a light there. Anyway, and then a 12 volt outlet. So, and the power button's right behind that light. So, you can throw your phone in there to charge it. It does work great. And we'll get into all the off road features later. There's cup holders there. My sunglasses don't fit up here, just like many other vehicles, but it's not big enough for my sunglasses to fit. There is a sunroof. Again, this is all standard, um, just comes with it as it is. And then here is the fridge, keeps your drinks cool. Um, I don't know if that's my favorite feature or not. You lose a lot of space, but then you can have cold drinks. So uh, that's uh, something you'll have to decide if you like or not. Let's see, anything else up here in the front? Let's go check under the hood real quick. We'll get into all this off-road stuff a little bit later. Uh, basically, your ECT power is your tow haul mode in other vehicles. It holds the shift points longer and uh increases your throttle response this one will start in second gear that's a good one for snow so if you're on really slippery terrain you can do that it'll make it less likely that you're going to slip traction control center diff lock uh, let's go ahead and look under the hood it is a 5.7 liter v8 and it's beeping because the headlights are on these are led headlights with the projectors it's hard to see and the fog lights are on as well it's so bright out today Hard to see them. So there's the 5.7 liter V8. This is the same engine basically that's in the Sequoia and Tundra. This one's made in Japan. The Sequoia and Tundra engines are made in the US. And I I don't know the differences between them really. Same horsepower, 381 and horsepower, 401 torque. Um, there's a lot of space here. A lot of the dual battery guys will remount that and put a second battery in there for those uh, overlanders, if you will. But yeah, just a basic, normal setup. Easy to work on, it's a gas engine. Um, big battery, handle all the electronics and stuff in it. So overall, that's a great engine. Super reliable, very durable long-term. Uh, rear seats, child seat does fit in here. It's a little tight. Um, had to stop my daughter from kicking the screen a couple times. Um, and there's your screens and you have a huge bezels around it. I don't know, in, in uh, vehicles, I like the idea of having a tablet maybe, and even for the main infotainment system up front, if they had that be a replaceable tablet so you could upgrade to the most current technology every five years or whenever you wanted, uh, I think that would be a, a great option. Down here, uh, all your controls, heated seats on the outboard, middle row seats, and then your inputs, HDMI, your um, phone input whatever for your your um, rear seat screens there and separate volume for the two sides and wireless headphones for the two sides um, and then the third row seat 
Uh, we'll go around the other side to, to show you that. Um, third row on this thing is not my favorite. So to get into it, so those seats do tumble. The other side's the 60 split. And so that whole thing will go. And then it does have a hook here. You can pull this out and then that'll hook on down there and you can set the seat so it doesn't go all the way forward and smash your screen. Um, there's probably other uses for it too, but the main one I would imagine is to protect that screen. And I need two hands to get that back together, so we'll get back to that later. Uh, center seat, center armrest for the rear seat, remote control, and it's not very deep in there. And then you've got cup holders right there. So that's all that's in that center armrest. Ah, gotta fold that again. There we go. So the third row seat, um, these, you have to pull a handle from the back and then they fold down and it's not super easy to get back in there. Let me go ahead and fold one of them down. It is a split, so the top half is a hatch and the bottom half is a tailgate, which I do like. Um, sorry, cleaning supplies there for the media fleet people. So you pull that handle, it releases it. Oh, I'm on a hill, so this is hard. And then you fold it down, and then you pull this handle and you can adjust how far it reclines with that handle too, and then pop your headrest up. So that's how you get into that seat and look how much play there is in that. I just, I don't like these third row seats. In the 100 series, they just pop the seat, the whole seat out a lot easier. This one, you have to undo all this covers, whatever, unbolt it. It takes a lot more work to undo these seats. Uh, there is the jack there and extra storage and the tools for your jack are here, which I do like. So there's a tool set in there. And let's just go ahead and show you what's in there. So that's pretty heavy. Decent amount of tools there. Everything you need, a couple of extra wrenches, 10 millimeter, which everyone knows that works on cars. You, 10 millimeter is used for everything. Um, your lug nut wrench. I don't even know what all this stuff is for. For example, that rod. Not sure what that one's for. Um, anyway, there's a lot of, plenty of tools in there uh, for changing your tire. And it looks like doing a few other minor things. Uh, let's pop that back in there. Or I guess a 10 millimeter means you can pretty much take your whole engine apart because everything is a 10 millimeter. Um, not true, just a joke. All right, so then the other side is just empty storage that you can throw whatever you want in there. It's got the buckles as well. I do love the tailgate on this thing. Like I said, I'm on a hill. This is not this high normally, um, but it does have this 110 volt power outlet back here. And again, uh, just a couple little hooks and whatever. Let's go get in the third row seat real quick. So, it's not terrible to climb back here, but not super easy. Uh, you do have, sorry, two cup holders on each side and a little cubby here. Um, there are vents back here on the top. And then, I don't even know if I can fold this. I can, just barely. But basically, that'll get me stuck in here. Um, and then it does have anchors on both of these outboard second row seats. And you can see all this stuff that... Uh, I can't remember what these are for. I did look that up once. But this bar flips open and grabs onto these anchors. What were those for? All right, yeah, I don't remember what those two were for. I figured it out on the 2019, but on this one, not sure. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it back here. You can turn the light on and off. Same here, you can turn the side lights on and off. The middle one's on with the door. All right, and then the rear hatch is powered and it has lights there for your license plate and the rear camera. Um, there are sensors all around, obviously. Makes it easy to see where you are, where you're going. Um, cameras there with the surround view cameras. Decent roof rack, could use maybe one more cross member 
that's probably enough and then you you have to loosen four bolts here to adjust those so two on this side two on that side and then you can slide them and they slide all the way up to here and all the way down to the back there so there's a decent amount of adjustability um, now let's go for a short drive Like any other vehicle, they'll go to four low, four high, make that transition, put it in neutral, and then you shift there. We're back in a four high. Um, I'm curious, there is no multi-terrain select or crawl control if you're in four high. You still can lock the center differential. Right there, you saw it flash. Not sure, there it goes. Uh, there it goes, okay. So you can lock the center differential whether you're in four high or four low. Um, for this little section, we're not gonna need it. Uh, that's a different camera view because we're in four high. So these are the two wheels, driver side, passenger side wheel, and then that's the front camera and the surround view. Thanks for watching Engine Adventures review of the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, like button, and make sure to ring that bell for notifications.